Beck and Goss on 104.5 The Team. It's Pitch Perfect brought to you by Soccer Unlimited, where we talk about what's going on in the world of soccer. And our guy, Mr. Soccer himself, Matt Woods, helps us here on 245s on Friday. Woods, give us the biggest news involving the pitch on Pitch Perfect. Well, we're, we're going to hit Confederations Cup in a little bit, but the top story, I always look at the top story on ESPN or any of those sites out there, and the top story right now is Kobe Bryant finally pledging his allegiance to two soccer clubs. That includes Barcelona and Milan. Hang on, hang on. Now, I didn't major in geography at Hobart or Salve High School, but <laughs> is it Kobe from Italy? Wasn't he born yes, and raised in Italy? Yeah, so Barcelona you thought... is not in Italy. I know that one for sure, that right? That one for sure. M- Milan. <laughs> yes! Got it. That's in Spain. Is in Spain. All right. So I'm kind of confused by that. I, I would have thought he'd be a, a Roma fan or a, a Juventus fan. Those are big Italian clubs. He did he did choose Milan. So I, I kind of get that. But just just odd when uh, – I don't know if you know this, but at one point he, LeBron James – Owned a portion of Liverpool. He did, yes. I did know that, yeah. So so it's, I guess, a lot of the, not only NBA stars, but big stars in general are, are very interested in soccer uh, over across the pond. And uh, wouldn't surprise me one bit if Kobe did become a part owner of one team someday. Carmelo Anthony's a part owner Carmelo of the team. Carmelo Anthony, yeah. yeah he's, New York uh, Cosmos, right? Is that the team he owns? And then also Puerto Rican he's team He's got a, a Puerto Rican team as well, yes. And he's uh, he's a big big name in the soccer world. But bigger than you would possibly imagine as a as a fan of the NBA or fan of, of U.S. sports in general. The second biggest story today, the Confederations Cup final kicks off tomorrow. It'll be the juggernauts of Germany will take on Chile in the final, Chile gets there after their goalkeeper, uh, Claudio Bravo, saved three penalty kicks in one game in order for them to move on to the final. And by the way, two of those were on Cristiano Ronaldo. Wow. So not only did you save three in one game, which is, is one of the, the biggest feats I've seen from a goalkeeper, but you saved it against possibly the best player of this generation. Right between the eyes! That's exactly. Right. Shutting them down. Now they go and they face off. Uh, Chile faces off against Germany. It was probably... It, it probably. They are the best team in the tournament. They've dominated. They beat Mexico 4-1 to one to get to this spot. Uh, they are the most complete team. Their, their bench could start on pretty much any team in Europe. Mm. That's how good they are. Uh, led, by, led by Leon Goretzka. Listen to that name because he might be a big star in England one day. Uh, I, I got a feeling he's going to end up moving on from the from Germany to a, a club in England. Leon Goretzka, Goretzka. is his name. Okay, yes, he is a a big big German striker who uh, he'll he'll find a way to get goals. It just just give him a give him a little a little crease, a little little clear clear air, and he'll uh, he'll put a couple on the back of the net for you. So the winner again, it's Chile versus France or Germany. It's it's Chile versus Ger- versus Germany. Okay, Those Chile versus yep. Germany in the finals. There, if they do win, wh- let's say Chile wins, right? Uh, do they get a bid to the World Cup? What does this mean overall? Or is this just a bragging right? This is more of a bragging right style tournament. Yeah. These both these teams are going to be in the World Cup. Uh, actually, all the teams that are probably involved in this tournament, there's only eight of them. Uh, they're all going to be likely involved in the World Cup. They all lead their confederations. They all won their confederations last year. The only two that, that are not part of it were Germany, because they were the World Cup champions, were allowed to, to be in this, and Russia, because they're hosting the next World Cup. So they were in this. That makes up the eight teams with the six confederations. So, uh, and, and oddly enough, Germany wouldn't surprise me one bit if they were the World Cup champions uh, next year Ooh, as well. Ooh, already calling out some World Cup picks here. I'm not okay. picking them. I okay. will say this. I'm not picking them, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if they walked away with the, the title once again. It is pitch perfect here. Gaz in Woods, Levac off. He's back with us on Tuesday on 104.5 The Team. You brought up this idea of transfers in soccer. What does this mean? It's not transfers like college sports. It's something different. It's it's a little different. It's You have to agree. Both teams have to agree on a sum for a player. When that sum is agreed upon... The team that is taking the player can talk to the player and agree with a, a deal, like a five-year deal worth however much money a week. But these teams have to agree on a certain dollar amount for a transfer. So right now, I, I was going to give you the three biggest transfers I expect to happen in this first week. Hang on, I just want to clear this up just in case some people aren't familiar with this process. It's like trades without other teams getting Without other return? players, yes, you okay. get money in return. Okay. 
Uh, so the biggest three that I think are going to happen this week, and the, the window actually opens tonight as well. Actually, I think it's only a couple hours away because it starts over in England. St. So. Dave's the NBA free agency, and also hockey, I think, starts on Saturday. So there you yep. go. Everyone's doing the same thing on July 1. There's three big ones I think are, are, are likely to happen. The first one being Arsenal will, will get a deal for Alexander Lacazette, who was the 28-goal striker for Lyon in France. He is a guy that, uh, another one, just like that Goretzka fellow I mentioned earlier, he's a guy, you give him a little clear clear space, he's going to put not one, not two, maybe three in the back of the net for you. Another one is... Uh, a guy from New Guinea, which I don't think anyone ever thought had a soccer team to begin with, but this guy named uh, Nabi Kita is a big player for uh, RB Leipzig out of the Bundesliga. He's, I'll believe all of that, what you just said. He's probably coming to Liverpool. Okay. And then, and then the last one, I, I think Chelsea will get a deal for uh, Danny Alves in the, in the next coming days. So if you're a soccer fan, you know those names. Uh, be aware because these next couple of days will likely determine – where your team goes this summer and how they fare in the leagues next year. I don't want to throw you off here and pitch perfect. Throw but me off. The last two weekends, and especially with, and we know Pacquiao Horn's coming up. We'll talk to Mike Coppinger here in a bit. There's a lot of different things going on on ESPN. It feels like the real life scenario that dodgeball is actually coming to truth. The Ocho. Levac and I touched on it yesterday that he was watching drone racing on ESPN2. We need beach soccer, man. Beach soccer maybe is on the way. Arm wrestling. A lot of MLS is going on, though, on ESPN. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen this, but the Portland Timbers, right? They're a team out there. Seattle's another team. Big now, rivalry. Now that the MLS is getting more pump on ESPN, I just think about their season and wonder... Is the summer the right season for them to be playing in? Should they move their season? Why now in the summer when less sports fans are consuming ESPN is the Professional American League playing in the summer? Well, I'll bet you don't know. They actually end in, in, in December. So they, they go. Their season is very long. It is, it is like a, a English soccer season to where they start uh, in England. They start in, in, in the middle of August and they end in May. Well, here they, they start, I believe it's in, uh, in early May. And they go all the way to December. So it's it's a long season, but I think it's only a matter of time before this really starts to catch on. The way ESPN's going about their coverage for uh, the MLS is better than I thought they would ever do, to be honest. When they signed that deal a few years back with the MLS, I didn't think it was going to be this good. And they've actually grown the product to be something that's not only fun to watch, but something that actually means something now they've made it they've made soccer something more important to watch in the u.s yeah it definitely is and it gets us coverage in the summer and they get the promos on sports center and all that which helps out the broadcast especially on the weekend sports centers and now you're getting good players too yeah but, you got better players coming over here so let's say the guys in the mls maybe i'm gonna answer my own question which i didn't mean to do but i'm just tossing it out there is the mls season starting after some of these other european leagues because those american players want to be in those european leagues well they actually can't play in those leagues when you're oh, when you're okay. signed with the team in the in an, in an mls uh an mls organization you can't go and play over there you're already assigned your one club team so the thing well here, here's what i like to look at it when the season over there ends in england those players that have a chance to maybe not sign back with those teams that are maybe getting a little older maybe not wanting to play as high caliber a level that's where the MLS comes in, and that's how we got uh, one of the, the best German players to ever play the game, Bastian Schweinsteiger. Schweinsteiger I can never say his name right, but he plays for Chicago San Diego right now. in. <laughs> San Diego on set. San Diego on San Diego. He plays for Chicago right now, and he's lighting the league up. A lot of yeah. You know, if you go onto like Twitter or something, you look at the MLS. I'm pretty sure it's every other day they have a highlight from him making somebody look look silly on on the pitch. So. Uh, it's just a matter of time before this league becomes bigger, and it looks so looks as though a lot of the stars that are aging over in England are are eyeing up the MLS. Yeah, it just almost frustrated me that with all this downtime now, and hockey is off, and the free agency is on the way, and the NBA free agency. If somehow the MLS season championships could be in the summer. And they could own that and make it a big deal and yeah. people would have to tune in. How much more would that help the league rather than it ending, like you mentioned there, in late fall mm -hmm. when college football and NFL and baseball and everybody, NBA and hockey's all starting up. They could own that little few days in the summer here and make it all about soccer. Maybe it's something the league looks at going down the line, but it is getting ESPN coverage and that's sometimes for some leagues 
you can't find the value for that. You're exposing your product to sports fans. Clint Frazier. Remember that old? Go ahead. Soccer Unlimited. That's right. Go ahead about Soccer, soccer Unlimited. Unlimited. You're, you're, I don't know if Clint Frazier ever shopped you know at Soccer what? Unlimited. Maybe he'd he like looks to. like a guy that might have played soccer in his day. Though. I think I, so, with, yeah. the, with the hair at one point. So, uh, yeah, Soccer Unlimited, your total soccer store. Uh, go there and get get some. They got some great deals right now. The new new a lot of new kits are coming out. A lot of Ooh. new jerseys. So if you if you're interested in in getting some of that stuff before the season really kicks off over in, in England and, and in uh, in Europe, uh, go to there go there right now and get some good deals. Go get your stuff. Go upgrade yourself over at Soccer Unlimited to get your newest gear. Make sure to help out your team, your school, whatever it is, and be the best that you can be with your. They're very good with season. schools and club teams. They're nice, very man. good. They they have really good deals for if you if you have a club team or, or a school team that needs uniforms or anything like that. They're very good with that.